Thanks, everybody. Can, can everybody hear me? Yeah, in the back? Cool. Uh, okay, so uh, my, my talk's about um, cross-site scripting um, in uh, relative URLs and some other techniques. So I'm a researcher for Port Swigger, the makers of Burp. Um, I've been working there for a few months now. I'm a JavaScript XSS, XSS hacker. Uh, I love anything JavaScript and XSS, obviously. I love Jav JavaScript sandboxes too. Um, I've got um, a project called Mental JS, um, which sandboxes JavaScript into safe form so that you can um, inject JavaScript itself and rewrite the entire page and in intercept any XSS and rewrite it into sandbox JavaScript. Check it out, it's called Mental JS. I worked for Microsoft for five years testing the IE XSS filter. So if you find it hard to bypass, hopefully you do. That's because I've been testing it. <laughs> I just had this slide because I wanted to put a zombie on my slides, so basically. So we've got zombies in security and in horror films. There's, endless, there's lame horror films and there's endless sequels. I know what you did last summer. I still know what you did last summer. It can all apply to security. I'll always know what you did last summer. I can't, I can't believe that. Endless. We've also got some lame vulnerabilities and lame films. Tab jacking. <laughs> so um, the saw moment is something that um, is an unexpected twist. If you've if you seen the film, um, it's quite a quite a good twist in the, in the in the film, and um, it, it applies to how I found this vulnerability. I, I, I was thinking outside the box, trying to um, think of a way to exploit something that what, that I knew was a vulnerability, but I wasn't sure how to exploit it. So it's a clever thing that you didn't see coming, and um, people might might have seen the functionality, uh, well, the behaviour, should I say, um, but nobody thought a way of exploiting it. So yeah, you enjoy it, and afterwards you think, oh yeah, that explains a lot of us. And basically, um, absolute URLs. So absolute URLs are complete. They're, they specify the full URL and um, parses the, the, the protocol. Um, there's no guesswork involved for the browser, other than resolving the protocol. But relative URLs, now that, that's different. Relative URLs, de depending on where you are in the structure of the site, so you can say dot dot slash, you, you, you can go in the document, but there's something not quite right about that. The browser gets you where it thinks you are in the document. So the server knows the file, but the browser has no idea. So there's guesswork for the browser. So I consider relative URLs harmful, and I'll show you why. So have you, have you visited a site and see all this, the CSS disappear. Um, usually, if you put a forward slash in the, in the URL while you're pen testing a website, for example, you'll see the CSS disappear. Something isn't right, and I wondered why, why, would, why was that happening? So I looked at um, Firebug, looked at the requests, and the, the, be, the behavior when you put a, a forward slash in the file name um, was different. You, you, the, the CSS disappeared. Um, the CSS may return a 404 or a 302. <coughs> so the relative path can um, reference a style sheet. So you, um, if you add the slash to the URL, um, it doesn't uh, it doesn't expect um, the, the site site doesn't expect you to ha to insert a slash, and therefore it resolves the CSS file in a different way. So, so it finds it a different location. What's interesting is it either returns a 404 or a 302. Now a 302 you might not notice because, and you, you, you might wonder why um, it's, it's returning a 302 if you pull a forward slash in because surely it can't find the file. So has anybody developed a website with a relative uh, CSS URL like that? Hands up, anybody? Yeah, yeah only, only that many. I thought it'd be more than that. <laughs> So your code could be vulnerable. 
So um, if you add the slash, um, the URL is changing. The, the expected URL is provided. So <coughs> the, the URL that you're going to get is different than what it's expecting. Um, so what happens is the, the you go to the the, the 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 relative URL is parsed, but it's actually um, embed it's actually executed on the um, injected page. So the CSS uh, file is actually going um, to the HTML page instead of instead of a CSS file. So it, RPO is relative path overwrite. That's what I've named the technique, and it works. Um, Works with CSS, but it works in other areas as well. I call it RPO. <laughs> so you need some pers persistent text on the page, um, <coughs> such, for example, username, um, a, a male subject header, or something like that. You need a, a relative path that references a style sheet. And in the browser will render the style sheet and execute the code. So it it, it will um, look for the CSS file that you've specified, um, but it will actually execute on the HTML page. And the persistent text that you've entered will be executed. And it works on IE, obviously. <coughs> so to understand how, how to exploit it, you need a quick CSS lesson. Um, so. What's interesting about the specification, I think it's in CSS 2.1, um, the user agents must ignore the style sheet, um, when it, uh, ignore the styles when it encounters um, an invalid rule. Um, so maybe we can take advantage of that um, by uh, ending the CSS selector and then executing the, uh, the CSS. <coughs> So if we can get the, the browser to point to a web page and it contains CSS, then maybe we can render it. So using a CSS selector, you can, you can make it ignore what's happened before. So if the relative URL is being sent to a web page and it encounters HTML, you can make it ignore the, the HTML code, which the, the browser thinks is CSS expressions are our friend. Basically, expressions were just created for pen testers. So the web page contains a relative uh, URL. So the, the shortest vector in the world is just a forward slash. So when the, the forward slash is appended onto the URL, the relative path is changed so that the, the relative URL is changed to point to the HTML. The style sheet is lo lo loaded as CSS. And what you'll see if you look at the network, um, you'll see it pointing to. <coughs> sorry about that. Uh, you'll you'll see it pointing to the um, slash uh, web page, and then it'll look for the CSS within the web page. So you need you need ro uh, rewrite rules enabled, or um, in ASP you, you you might I think ASP.NET by default supports. Um, Pretty URLs, so you need you'll need a pretty URL as as, the, as it's called. Um, and so what what's ha what's happening is that you're not actually referencing styles.css, but you're ref referencing the PHP file. So this is how it works. So that can everybody see. Um, so basically, you close the CSS selector, injects in a global rule, it, it executes the expression. The relative style sheet is loaded and, and the load, loads the whole page. And you just inject a forward slash with whatever URL you want. So dot dot slash. What if somebody put a dot dot slash in? Could, could you exploit that? Luckily, you're safe. Actually, not you. Hell, I. <laughs> RPO2. RP So the, the browser comes up. So you, if you um, enter dot dot slash in a relative URL, it looks up upwards in the directory tree, obviously. But the browser doesn't know what the file is. Only the server knows what the file is. So if we provide a fake directory, then we can send the URL back to itself again. 
for example, slash fade directory, whatever. So then the style sheet is then loaded back onto itself again. Well, not itself, the web page, the parent web page. And expressions work in IE compact mode, but not in Spartan. You can use iframes to um, downgrade the website and execute expressions. Um, next part of my talk is about mutation XSS. Uh, me and Mario came up with the name. So it happens when HTML uh, mutates from uh, a safe state from an un uh, from a safe state to an unsafe state. Um, so you might have a perfectly valid HTML. Uh, fragment that looks safe and is safe, but when um, when the inner HTML is read and written, um, it's mutated into an unsafe state. So we're basically fooling the, the actual HTML parser to rewrite the code. And there's many ways to do this attribute quotes. Uh, X HTML, HTML confusion and CSS strings, URL, ba badly decoded and stuff. All happens on IE. So uh, there's the, the classic vector that uh, Yusuke Hasegawa came up with. So basically you've got an image um, element and in the title there's two back ticks and when when it's rewritten, when in a HTML is read and then written, um, it gets rewritten and the on error um, handler gets executed. Um, it was previously in the title attribute. Yusuke Hasegawa discovered it um, and he's the, the birth of, he, he discovered mutation XSS basically, this is the, the birth of it. It, it did work in IE7, in IE7 but now it's patched, unfortunately. So maybe we can do, uh, confuse the, um, the parser um, with XHTML-like vectors um, in HTML. So maybe we can confuse it into thinking it's still inside an attribute and then therefore render entities. So for example, um, XMP tag, um, this is um, the valid string that isn't is malicious basically and notice the forward slash on the uh, the end of the element name when that's rewritten um, it gets it, the the source code gets parsed the entities get parsed it closes the XMP tag and executes the iframe and that works in IE9 compact mode You can also uh, use the same in styles, script, comment, XML. So st uh, the, this is an example with style. So when in, in a HTML is read and written, it'll get mutated. So um, another tag that mutates is the, uh, in IE, it's a HTML uh, like comment tag. Um, it's, it, it's sort of like ASP um, when people were, um, were putting ASP uh, in the HTML by accident. I think that's where it, where it came from. It behaves like a comment but renders in attributes in different versions of IE. So, for example, um, the attribute here is HTML encoded. Um, and if you notice, the greater than sign is closing the, um, the attribute and then uh, the iframe is encoded and that will get decoded and that mutates um, into an unsafe state there. So as you can see um, the HTML parser is fooled because um, within the attribute the uh, greater than sign is uh, closing the tag itself but it still thinks it's in an attribute so it carries on and renders the HTML and that works in IE9. So the is, is there like a real world um, example of mutation XSS? So let, let's do a search in Google, for example. 
So if you search for um, an ending title and then iframe and then uh, point it to Microsoft.com and then manually put the browser into IE8 mode. When the print preview is clicked, we get an interesting result. Um, the title mutates within the print preview itself. So uh, even though this is a perfectly safe string, um, when you do the search in Google, when you click print preview, it mutates and executes the iframe. And that's a print preview from Google. So just doing a search for uh, that string um, create, creates the iframe in the print preview itself. So how can we um, simulate it? Um, what you need to do is uh, basically read and write in a HTML. Uh, you can do that with a quick shortcut that just goes um, document.body in a HTML plus equals and then a blank string. And that will mutate in HTML itself. So when, yeah, it causes mutation. You, if you do it multiple times, you can have multiple levels of mutation. So um, you could have like double encoded H, uh, HTML uh, entities, um, and then it would be decoded multiple times after the you know, HTML is read and written. So yeah, there is a tool for that. I've written a tool. Um, you can get it at businessinfo.co.uk slash labs slash mxss. That will rewrite um, the inner HTML and give you a preview. So a couple of legacy IE bugs. Um, you can actually manipulate anchors um, using a global reference um, to the anchor. Um, but what happens is, so if you reference um, an anchor as X, like that, um, what happens is quite unexpected, really. Because when you set the, the variable uh, to JavaScript URL, um, the anchor is, the href is changed. So the, the JavaScript URL is um, uh, injected into the href attributes of the anchor. And that works in compact mode. Uh, another trick is um, you can uh, reassign functions from um, within the arguments of a JavaScript function call. Um, so basically, uh, if you've got an injection, um, within um, a function call and it's an argument you can bypass the um, ie xss filter so if your xss occurs there you just you can redefine um, some function um, to alert and then that will execute uh, xss so another um, bug um, is uh, frame busting. So frame busters um, can be attacked using DOM, cl DOM clobbering. So DOM clob clobbering basically means that you can um, fool a, a, a JavaScript object um, in, uh, using something else. So um, if, if you've got a form, you can overwrite references to location. So a classic fr uh, frame buster is uh, top dot location does not equal self, and then self dot location equals top location. So basically, if your iframe was framed, then um, the redirect is um, uh, replaced by the parent URL. So the, 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 there's a redirection from the parent URL if the if the the site is framed. So if we can control the top object, then we can execute XSS because if um, we're not actually um, using the top object um, or the self object, um, then um, we can, the, on, when it, it gets redirected, it, we can execute XSS. So um, form ID, for example, equals top, location equals JavaScript URL. So, the injection has to occur before the frame buster in order for it to execute. 
Um, so um, in IE, the HTML attribute is decoded and the location assignment is also decoded. So we can double encode our vector. Um, Sorry, duplicate slide. Oh, there we go. Um, so, location. Uh, so, if we give the form ID uh, a value of top and location JavaScript ampersand uh, and then 58 alert one, um, that will be decoded once uh, as the HTML attribute. So, the ampersand will be, called, will be decoded. Um, and then, when the location assignment is um, fired, uh, then it'll be decoded again. So, with the double. We can double decode uh, the attribute. So, um, if the injection occurs uh, within the X variable there, um, we can bypass the, the Chrome XSS filter, um, but that's by design. But if the um, double quote is filtered, for example, um, we can get a HTML version of it that bypasses the Chrome filter. So here um, we close the script tag, uh, inject uh, SVG, because we, we inject SVG to put uh, the parser into um, HTML, um, so it'll decode HTML entities within the, S the, within the SVG script. Um, so this will bypass the Chrome filter. Um, the ending script um, will break out of the uh, variable and then uh, execute. So there's another way to bypass the uh, XSS auditor. This is still unpatched. Um, you can, um, if we've got an existing script block um, that occurs after the injection, then um, we can inject a script and then point it to a data URL, and then we, we, you need to concatenate the, sec the last part of the string with um, so the injection um, with the, the reflected output on the page, um, and then that will, that will bypass the filler. Uh, that's an example. So the ABC part at the end is required because we need the closing script, because in Chrome, um, the, the script uh, requires an ending quote, an ending um, script tag, um, even though uh, if you put a forward slash um, after the the script name, it, it still won't work. Um, so yeah, um, that's how it works. I was vulnerable to uh, meta uh, char uh, char set uh, injection. Um, now that's patched. So it was a really simple bypass. You could just inject uh, the char set, uh, give it UTF-7, and then execute. But they've patched that now. Um, they they um, patched the HTTP uh, equiv um, attribute, but they forgot that Meta can also have a, a char set. I think originally um, they did detect that, um, so maybe it's a regression. So I, I um, also blo is blocking anchor injections. Um, this is because um, if you double encode your excess vector, inject the anchor, then you, when you click it on the link, you you will bypass the filter and execute XSS. So the the regex is really basic; it just blocks the href basically. Um, I bypassed that using form action, but that has now been patched as well, unfortunately. So uh, the form action uh, basically worked by injecting a hidden, um, a hidden element and then uh, encoding the XSS vector, then give a button the form action name, um, which would point to your, your, your intended URL, well, the, the, the page that you're on, and then um, give it a, a style that covers the page and then absolute, absolute position as well. 
and then clicking on the button would resubmit your hidden field back to the page and then that would execute XSS and bypass the filler. So there's a generic method to bypass uh, both the IE and Chrome filter. Um, whenever a site filters a character, you can take advantage that, of that to bypass um, both filters. Um, IE is uh, a bit uh, more intelligent than Chrome in that respect because um, it takes into account uh, less than and greater than um, characters and then still detects XSS even if you're injecting that within um, a script-based injection. So basically what we do is we, if the double quote is filtered, for example, we inject the double quote within the keyword that the IE filter looks for um, and then we can bypass um, the filter. Um, there's, the in, there's an interesting part um, of this is that we need to include ABC um, before the style injection because otherwise the JavaScript uh, script injection will be executed. So if we inject ABC um, after the single quote, that will uh, bypass the JavaScript injection rules um, so that the parenthesis won't be replaced by a hash symbol um, and that will enable to ex execute, execute the XSS vector. So the XSS auditor is a lot easier to bypass um, than IE in this, well, in this particular case. So you can, um, using quotes works within the script injections. Um, using quotes with keywords, for example, in JavaScript URLs, you can um, inject quotes or inject um, any character that's filtered and bypass the JavaScript base rules. So here's some examples. So if we, um, if a site filters the parenthesis, um, obviously I've made a mistake there, it shouldn't be a JavaScript alert because the parentheses are, are um, filtered, but um, if you put the parenthesis within the JavaScript keyword, that will bypass the IE filter. So if the, the filter filters the semicolon, we can um, inject that in the on error handler there, and that will bypass both filters. and the double quote is a special case for script-based injections. Um, if you put the double quote um, within the parenthesis, you can bypass the IE uh, excess filter. Um, so SIC doc, um, that's awesome for bypassing WAFs. Um, you can use multiple levels of decoding. So here we can um, use the SRC doc attribute and give it a double encoded um, HTML entities that create another iframe within that se uh, secure doc, uh, uh, SRC doc, sorry. And then um, the, the iframe will be decoded. The iframe will be decoded the second time within the um, SRC doc and then executed. And data URLs inherit origins on Firefox. So um, on f Every browser apart from Firefox, oh no, uh, Firefox and uh, IE Edge um, both inherit origins. Um, we can mix URL encoding and HTML entities as well. We can also use HTML5 entities. Um, here's an example. So here we inject um, a data URL um, that's got a percent 26 which is the ampersand um, um, which is the less than sign as well in court so the URL encoded is the, the URL encoded encoding is decoded and then the HTML entity encoding is decoded too um, and then that results in the iframe being executed so um, another thing about URLs is that they look a lot like JavaScript so if you look at a URL, um, the HTTP part is a, a label statement and the forward slash forward slash um, is a comment. 
in IE, you can actually have just a label statement for some reason. Um, but on all other browsers, it's a syntax error. So that's valid JavaScript in IE. So if we can inject new lines, then we can um, execute the URL itself. Because you're inside a comment and there's a new line, then the, ne the next statement will, will execute your code. So IE supports both new lines and line, separate, uh, line paragraph separators within the URL. Um, so if your URL contains a new line or a paragraph separator, then you can execute when um, the URL is evolved. Uh, Chrome only supports uh, line separators. Um, it doesn't support a new line. Firefox URL encodes. That sucks. <laughs> So here's an example, um, location.hash, give it a new line, alert one, and then eval.document.url. If you're inside um, an inv uh, events handler, then you can eliminate the document dot part because um, within the event handler, the document is assumed, um, first the element is assumed that it, you, you're, you're looking for a property on the element, and then if you can't find the property on the element, it will then look at the document. So when you um, eval URL, then it'll look for um, eval document.url. Um, and there's a, I think that's a line separator. Um, that's how it works. Um, we can also, um, if, you've, if you've ever done a check for um, an external URL um, with a forward slash and looking for backslashes, you can actually um, inject tabs within the forward slashes. So um, that will probably bypass a lot of uh, server-side code that does that check. New lines also work. Um, so the window on error handler, um, it's an interesting way to execute XSS. So we can execute without parenthesis. Um, so when you've got, when you assign on error, which is window dot on error, um, assign it a function, you can throw an exception, which is then executes your code. Um, so that will alert XSS. Unfortunately, uh, Firefox prefixes it with two words when you fire it. Um, when you're doing a val, um, but Chrome uses only one word. Um, so what happens is it, it says uncaught or something. So if you tried to eval, um, you need. So what happens is um, you assign on error hand, the on error handler to eval. You throw an exception. You give it um, an equal um, and then alert, and then. Um, the encoded parenthesis there, um, and then that will um, execute. It will execute uh, the the eval will execute on uh, uncaught equals alert one. Uh, and that's all I've got. Any questions? It's a combination of, real, of techniques, really. Um, I do uh, do some fuzzing. Um, I created a, a website called shazza.co.uk, which basically you can do uh, shared fuzzing. Um, so basically it works like JS performance, um, but for um, XSS vectors. So I've done, I've done a, a way to automate um, testing of like browser, uh, browser behavior. Um, so, like, you can find, like, the, U the URL example, I found that using fuzzing. Um, but I do do uh, manual testing quite a lot as well. Um, and even um, just browsing the web and 
um, finding um, unexplained behaviour and then tr trying to investigate it. That's how I found the uh, relative URL trick. Um, I just wondered, I was injecting, um, I was injecting a website with six, uh, XSS using a forward slash and then a quote, and then I wondered why why was the, CS, uh, the CSS all disappearing, and then I looked at the uh, the network, and then you could see that you get a 302, and I was wondering why would you get a 302 because it can't find the, the CSS, and that's how basically I discovered um, how to inject the CSS onto itself. There's a question. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you detect that? And for the other vectors, people, CSS and stuff? Um, so the way to, to check it um, is you can check URLs with an anchor and then inspect the host. So um, basically, you inject some characters. Um, so inject two forward slashes and then um, a character in the middle. Um, and then inspect the uh, anchor app. Um, actual uh, the anchor element and then check the host is actually uh, an external host so the, there's javascript that actually checks where where the url is pointed to no it's using using the browser um basically uh, using shazza to check that um and basically you can um you can get, once you've got the the Shazza URL, you can then basically share that with anybody, and then each each of the browsers, when they're executed, will get, will will tell you which characters are are are, are uh, being being shown. So yeah, sure. Yeah, so if there's like a behavioral difference, then there's usually a bug. So if you've got two browsers that do a certain thing and then another browser does something else, then there's usually a bug that you can exploit, that you can, you can um, take advantage of. So what to do, how to like make it uh, really secure uh, through like defining new RxC and uh, like pushing... Uh, browsers are doing a pretty good job. They, they're basically um, matching each other's behavior, um, and that helps quite a lot, eliminate a lot of the bugs that I find, definitely. So if they're, if they're monitoring what uh, Chrome's doing um, and then replicating the same behavior, then they, w they will reduce the amount of bugs that I can find. Um, so a, a good example of that um, was uh, Opera. So uh, Opera um, allowed um, more properties um, in the locate in an external location for an iframe, um, because it allowed more properties, um, one of those properties leaked, and then you could execute um, X domain um, code um, on Opera. Um, and that was if if their behavior had matched the other browsers, they wouldn't have had that that vulnerability. Yeah, sure. No, everything. Uh, it, it will if, um, basically um, any website that has a pretty URL, um, so AS, ASP uh, uh, .NET is vulnerable to it as well, and PHP with the rewrite rules. But any website that pr that prettifies URLs. You could you could potentially um, you. I'd, no, I'm not sure you can fix it from from a server point of view, um, because even if you monitor the, you, you couldn't monitor the characters within the path name because that would probably break sites. Um, the the only probably f the the best fix is to use either a root relative URL, so like forward slash whatever, or an absolute URL. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So if you've already got a vulnerability, though, what, you wouldn't really need the RPO, would you? So let's, let's say it's a, it's a fixer, and you can inject stuff. You, 
you, you could in, you could have a, a, an RPO uh, vulnerable page that has reflected XSS. Is that what you mean? So within the UR, the, yeah, the URL itself would be encoded, but that would still be vulnerable to RPO. Yeah, but uh, I mean, when it, let's say it has like index.php slash files.css, and if you give the index.php, I guess it will echo the Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm not following it. Maybe we'll talk after, maybe I can, you can explain it better then. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.